Welcome to my no BS guide on how to climb out of low elo as a top laner. My name is Kain and last split I ended Grandmaster as a mid lane main. However, to switch things up a bit, this split I decided to challenge myself by climbing as a top laner and specifically by playing Irelia for the most part of it because she's quite a mechanical champion which makes the challenge only harder and thus also more fun. At the time of making this video I'm currently Emerald 2 7 TLP with about a 62-63% win rate and I've only played top lane so far, I didn't get filled for a single game. I wanted to make sure that this video came out right now because I understand that most people out there consider low elo to be bronze, silver, gold and platinum. Since I just got Emerald I basically remember everything I focused on to climb to where I'm at now. Once I'll hit higher ranks, which will be shortly, I'll make a video on how to climb to those ranks as well, but for the time being, I think this is the best moment to record a video on how to climb out of the low elo bracket. That being said, I'll keep this video short and sweet, so let's get started. Step 1. It's crucial that you keep a small champion pool. I strongly suggest that you pick up 2 or 3 champions to climb with. Personally, I started out by only playing Irelia, which felt great because this way I improved quite fast at her mechanics, matchup understanding and just her laning in general. However, since the nature of top lane is so snowbally, it really sucks to be in a counter matchup. So if you can avoid that, you should definitely do it. That's why I would recommend every top laner out there to pick up 2 or 3 champions instead of becoming a one trick pony. Step number 2. Try to main at least one strong early game champion. If you've played top lane before, you probably experienced how snowbally this lane is. You either stomp your lane opponent or you get stomped. The main reason for this is because the top lane is just such a long lane. When you're ahead, you can create a long lane for yourself to make it easy to all in your opponent or the other way round. On top of that, compared to mid lane, top lane is a lot less involved in the action, especially early on. This means that junglers and supports typically won't perma visit your lane, especially early on in the game, right? Now, this means that if you're losing your lane, nobody will come to help you out. But that also means that if you're stomping your lane opponent, it's also very likely that he's going to be helpless. So I strongly advise you to pick up a strong early champion like Riven, Renekton, Jax, instead of something like Nasus. Why you might ask? Well that brings us to our next step. Step 3. If possible, you should always get prior over the first couple of waves. In order to get that prior, you'll need a strong early game champion or a strong level 1 champion. Compared to mid lane, top lane is a lot more matchup depending. In the mid lane, oftentimes you have desynchronized matchups. So instead of a melee versus melee matchup, you'll often see something like a ranged champion versus a melee champion. In 90% of the cases, the ranged champion will have prior over the first couple of waves due to their ranged advantage. In top lane, that's not the case. Most of the time, you'll have a melee versus melee matchup, and that makes it so much harder to determine who wins level 1 to get that initial prior. Picking a strong early game champion allows you to get the prior over the first couple of waves without needing a lot of matchup understanding, because people will either be scared of you because they know how strong you are, or if they end up fighting you, you're very likely to beat them, so in both scenarios, you'll end up having lane prior. Now why should you have lane prior early on? Well that brings us to step number 4. Win your lane in less than 5 minutes by doing a 2 or 3 wave crash. This has been the concept that got me to Emerald without having to do anything fancy, and don't worry, I'll show you some examples. Let's start with a 3 wave crash. If you are stronger than your opponent at level 1, or they need to leash, or they just let you attack the wave for free, you can gain control over the first wave by doing more auto attacks on the wave than your opponent. This will give you multiple advantages. You will get level 2 and level 3 faster than your lane opponent, so you can try to surprise them with your level lead and maybe pick up an early kill, or already get them behind in terms of HP. On top of that, it gives you full control over the wave. A 3 wave crash is as simple as this. You slow push the first and second wave, and you fast push the third wave. If you manage to get your opponent low before crashing the third wave, you can look to dive him, either alone or with your jungler. But the great thing is, you don't have to. You can always just look to put a deep ward down on the map or take a cheetah recall. While your opponent is stuck under his turret farming minions, you can recall to refill your HP and mana and buy an item. That's what we call a cheetah recall. Now by the time you get back to lane, the wave will be on your side of the map in a perfect position to set up a freeze. And since you're full HP and full mana and have an item late, you should win every single trade from there on. If your opponent stays to break the freeze, he risks dying to you or your jungler, and if he recalls, he'll lose a lot of CS. So either way, he's screwed, and you'll have a free lane from this point on. Alright, so in this clip, I'll show you guys how to do a 3 wave crash. Now you're gonna see something, Malphite will be standing AFK here under his turret. Now in another game, he might actually be leashing, or even if he doesn't have to leash and walks up, he wouldn't, able, he wouldn't be able to get prior anyway, because we're Jax, and our E can dodge his auto attacks. So we should get prior over the wave anyway. So it doesn't even matter that he's going to show up a little bit late to lane here. It wouldn't even make a difference. So for the for the sake of this clip, it doesn't even matter. 
when we get prio, we do a couple of auto attacks. We're not here. We're just going to last hit because you need to be conservative with auto attacks since we're doing a three wave crash. If we do too many auto attacks, we will be shoving in too fast. And then we might actually do a two wave crash instead of a three wave crash. Now let's look how this plays out. My wave at this point is bigger. I'm also about to hit level two in a bit here so I can be aggressive. He can't really trade back, uh, back with me. So here I get level 2, I look to engage with my level 2 power spike with my big wave. We just lost hit minions here, we're not fast pushing. And now this third wave, we're gonna fast push it. We want to make it crash for sure as fast as possible, right? Because we are at risk of getting ganked by the enemy jungler. And also we need to crash it in before the next wave gets here. So now my focus is by killing this wave. Now Malphite is gonna walk up here for no reason. So I can look to trade with him. And now we just shiver then. Now we have multiple options here. If my jungler would have already been here, I would look to dive this because it's a very free dive angle on this guy. It's a Malphite level 2. He has no escape tools, no defensive tools. We can just kill him very easily. Now, he wouldn't lose that much. He would die and we'd give away a kill, but he wouldn't lose that much in terms of CS because he has teleport as well. Like here you see it, he still has teleport. So, risking to die here by diving him myself it's not even worth it. If my jungler were here, I would do it, but now I'm not going to do it because it's not even worth the risk. He wouldn't even lose that much. Now, I'm going to recall here, but do I have to? No. If I had something like a jungler, like Nidalee, who wanted to invade early on, I could use this time to walk like this, visit the enemy jungler uh, on this red buff. But since Trundle is here, that's also not an option. So maybe Nidalee could just invade it her, her alone and I could just recall here. So and that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I recall here. And you're going to see what's going to happen while I recall it, is this guy is still stuck on his turret farming minions. And now I'm already back in lane. Now what is the beauty of that? Let me go back a little bit here. Let me speed this up. Yeah. What is the beauty of this? I have longsword. I have D-Blade, two potions. I'm full HP, full mana. This guy only has one potion. So he's a lot less strong in terms of itemization. And he's already half HP. So once I come in lane, I immediately jump on this guy. Because I know I'm stronger than him. Right. So here, if he just played out, also what's going to happen at this point. Look, is Malphite, if it, is it looking like a good situation? No. This wave is pushing towards me anyway. Can I hold it? Yes, I'm a lot stronger. So if you look, if he stays to shove in the wave, I will just look to kill him. Right. If he recalls, he will lose a lot of XP and gold. Right. He still has teleport, but he will still lose like three, four, five minions. Right. Which is not ideal for him. So it's obviously his best choice. That's what he should do at this point. Uh, but it is what it is. He doesn't. Right. Now, also, you might think you have a Shivana. Typically, Shivana likes to like full clear. She skipped two camps. She's already here. She's looking to early do something in the top lane here. Well, it's a bit weird, but obviously, once you put your waves in a position like this, where enemies are overextended and you always have the advantage so you can get them low, that's a lot more invitational for your junglers to actually pay a visit as well, because this looks very secure for your jungler. So they're going to be a lot more tempted to gank you if you can create situations like this. And you do that by doing those two or three wave crashes and then using your trading patterns uh, to get them low. Right. Now let's play it out. So we do get the kill here, and now what do I have to do? Well, it's actually very simple. Let's see how this plays out, to be honest. It's very simple. Look, a lot of people, let me explain this concept to you guys. It's not that advanced, but it baffles me how few people actually do this. Malphite just teleported back to lane. I also have teleport. So I could also just right now have said, hey, I'm going to spend my gold again. Reset, buy another item as well, right? Come back to lane immediately with my teleport. And now we are full, both of us, full HP, full mana. But I also spend all of my gold, so I'm again that much stronger than Malphite. It would be a great situation. So why didn't I do that? Because now I have a longsword and he has a sheen. Even though I have an assist, right? This guy is stronger than me right now in terms of spend gold. So why would I do this? Well, it's with the intention that I am still relatively healthy and high mana. So I might actually be able, my goal here is to bait Malphite into fighting me, getting him as low as possible, then recalling and then teleporting. I'm planning on teleporting here anyway. Right. So I might as well get him as low as possible before I teleport, because then once I come back with full HP, he will already be low and my laning phase will be easy. All I have to make sure is that in doing so, in trading with Malphite right now, since he's stronger than me, I just need to avoid dying, which is sometimes a bit tricky, but you're going to see how it plays out here. So here, intentionally, I'm just going to jump onto this guy, get him as low as possible, 
look, I'm going to take decent trades here, decent long trades to get him low, but I'm not winning the trade. If I stay, I die. So I just queue away here. Now what do I do? Look, I just recall. Right? I'm going to teleport back. I'm here to hold the wave in front of my turret. I'm going to hold Malphite here. I'm going to stop him. Put a ward here. I think he's recalling here, so I'm going to stop him. And now he's already half mana. He's already relatively low. Right? Only has like 70% health here. So now I have a big advantage. And ultimately, I'm going to kill him because of it. I'm going to sp uh, speed this up a little bit here. Look what's going to happen. I take a very good trade here with him. And he's actually going to die. And if this, if I, if you wouldn't be 70% HP in terms of health, that would be so much harder to do. But since I took that favorable trade before the recall, that is how I actually killed him here. I briefly wanted to mention that on top of the 3 wave concept, because this is also a concept that goes hand in hand with the 3 wave concept here. And not a lot of people actually do this. So that is what I wanted to show you guys. But this is the 3 wave concept. And on top of that, don't forget that if you have teleport up and you're relatively healthy, you can look, if your opponent doesn't have teleport, you can look to get them low and then teleport yourself. Just make sure that you don't die. All right, that was it for this clip. Now, the more I climbed, the more I noticed that junglers tend to do some cheesy top lane ganks in the early game. For example, a Master Yi, who typically likes to full clear and then gank so that he can get his level 6 as fast as possible, will now suddenly do a 3 camp clear to do a surprise gank top lane. And since the top laners usually don't expect this, it's actually a viable strat in the silo. The reason why this is so annoying for us top laners is that by the time the enemy junglers will be ready to level 3 gank us, we'll still be pushing in the third wave, meaning we're in an overextended position and thus very vulnerable to jungle ganks. A way to avoid this is by doing a 2 wave crash. Instead of hard pushing the third wave, we'll hard push the second wave. This will make the wave bounce in our direction. While a wave is pushing towards you, you're not losing a lot of CS. So whenever we think that the enemy jungler wants to level 3 gank us, we can just walk back to our turret because the wave is pushing towards us and we're not losing a lot of CS anyway. The only thing you need to take into account is that if the wave is slow pushing towards you and the enemy dive you, you'll lose a lot of CS and your game could actually be over. So it's essential that while a wave is pushing towards you, you stay as healthy as possible. A 2 wave crash is also a great idea whenever you see your jungler potting towards top lane. Typically your jungler will have finishes clear and ready to gank you by the time the enemy wave and laner will be on your side of the map. So you can basically get a free kill or assist with this. Alright guys, so in this clip I'll show you the stew wave crash. Now, why would I ever want to do a two wave crash? How do I even come up with that idea? Well, the thing is, I'm a Irelia versus Aatrox. Level 1, if I can get my, like, assuming that I can get my 4 stacks, which I should, then I can actually win from Aatrox level 1. So that gives me the prior, that gives me everything I want to do with the wave. It is just my choice, because Aatrox can't really contest me. That is the luxury of just being stronger than your opponent early on. So, now it's only the choice, well I can choose what I want to do, but now we have to make a choice. Do we want to go for a 2 wave or a 3 wave crash? The reason that I go here for a 2 wave crash is because my Charvan is potting into me. All right. I'll play it out here, you'll see for yourself what I mean, what, like why I go for a 2 wave crash here. So basically, what happens here, I just hit the minions, all of them, just once, just to get a couple of auto attacks before Aatrox, so that I do get level 2 first, right? So here, I have 3 stacks, so right now if I Q on Aatrox, I have 4 stacks, and I can actually run them down. Now I'm gonna screw it up, you're gonna see here my stacks, the moment I engage, or like, I don't think if I engage immediately, yeah, here, my stacks already ran out. So I queued on this minion, to then queue onto Aatrox, but I lost by 4 stacks, I only have 2. So now I can't really run down, run them down, but that's no problem. I have a bad trade here, a miscalculation here. Uh, but it doesn't really matter because of the early auto attacks I did on the wave. My wave is very big, so he can't really keep on chasing me here because he will take way too many, many too much minion damage. Also, I will get level 2 here in a bit. Right? If I kill this minion and done one melee minion from this wave, I will hit level 2. So that is also an advantage of having the push. At some point, you just get level 2 first, and you can look to do a very favorable trade. So here again, level 2. I can't really use it, because Aatrox is playing extremely safe here, so I can't really engage onto him. But we are not forced to. We can do it if we have an angle. If we don't have an angle, we're not forced to. It just gives you the opportunity to do it. Here, what did you see? I used my Q to finish off all the minions here of the second wave. Just to make sure I fast push the second wave. That is how we do it to wave crash. Now, another crucial thing about this is, look what I do. I killed all the minions, yet I'm walking towards the turret. This is to make sure that I crash the wave. 
Because if I immediately walk back like this, Aatrox could actually look to freeze the wave. But if I walk it in, he knows that I'm willing to fight him when he's looking to freeze it. And that makes it less likely that he will actually try to freeze. So here I walk it in and he just lets it crash from there on out. Now, what is the idea between the two, uh, between the, uh, after, what is the idea behind the two wave crashes? Look at me. Right now, do I have enough gold to recall um, 257? I don't. I can't really buy anything except for like a control ward or something. We're not going to do that. I can put a ward on the map, actually, if I want to, to. Like, I could put a ward here. Now, I don't know where Echo is. Echo might do something cheesy. So instead, I'm just going to hide into a brush here, stoke some XP for the mains that are going to push it towards me, and I'm going to wait for Jarvan to come here. Because the entire idea behind the two-wave crash is we want to make the wave bounce so that at some point when Jarvan is finished with his clear, Aatrox will be in an overextended position in lane here so that Jarvan has a free angle to gank us. So look what happens. So if we fast forward this a little bit... Hopefully you see that slowly but surely Jarvan's wa uh, Aatrox wave is building and Jarvan is obviously progressing in his clear. He's almost finished with his clear here. So, what is happening? If we pay some attention to Jarvan here, he's finishing up his clear, right? And while he's doing so, Aatrox is coming closer and closer and closer to us with his wave. Now this is very important. Look at Jarvan's movement here. Look at his movement. I think it's safe to say that he was plotting towards a scuttle. But my pinks here on the minimap, you can see them, and also in chat, my pinks tell him to come here to scuttle, uh, to top lane first, because we know that Echo pots back, uh, is potting um, towards here, because we saw it on the minimap. Like, we, if we go back here a little bit, you guys may not have paid attention to it, but here he is. He showed up in the mid lane and he has blue buff, so we know he hasn't taken red buff yet, so he's probably going to move towards his um, top side of the map here. So we know he's also potting into top, and that makes us risk that we need to fight a 2 versus 2 here on the skittle, or maybe a very big fight that might not be in our favor. But Jarvan skips Scuttle and first comes top lane and uses the opportunity that I created for him. We can actually look to kill Aatrox and then we don't have to flip everything on Scuttle. If we kill Aatrox, Jarvan can obviously take Scuttle by himself because Echo won't face check the Scuttle if his top laner is dead and if he knows that I can move. Right. So that is the idea behind it that I want to ping Jarvan, that I want to let him come now. So here, look what's going to happen. Aatrox is in a relatively overextended position here because of the two-wave crash. And now I'm just going to bait him into fighting me. Jarvan is here. The only thing you need to be aware of right now is Aatrox has a very big wave and he has raw damage. So if we take too much damage, he might actually get a double kill here. So it's crucial that I hit my stun. So here's the first part of my E. I'm going to be patient to make sure that I hit my second E. Otherwise, if we don't hit the E, we might actually get to kill both of us because it's a big wave. So here, I hit the E and now it's a free kill. So now we kill him. This is how you do a two-wave crash. Right. Now I'm going to show you guys how to actually use this lead and actually look to win your laning phase harder from this point on. Because this is all good and all because I'm saying based in this video, hey, two two-wave crashes, they are crucial. If you do this, you win your lane. 100% your lane opponent can't do anything anymore. But I want to show you guys what I mean with that. Because you guys could be like, yeah, okay, yeah, it's all good and nice to say all of that, but I can't do it in my games. But I'm going to show you how to do it. But this is, in essence, the two-wave crash. I could stop the clip here. This is how you do the two-wave crash and how you punish your lane opponent. Now, we're going to go further than that. I'm going to show you how to use that lead. Now, if you're Irelia here, what do you need to do? Well, this wave is already pushing back towards me. So, that means that the red minions are killing the blue minions. So, Aatrox is lo losing a lot of gold and XP here. Me, Irelia, is not. So, I can just recall, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to make sure that these minions don't kill my wave too fast and they actually crash. So I'm just going to trim the wave a little bit, like I'm going to do a couple of auto attacks here. You see here, I'm going to take this minion here. Yeah, and now I'm just going to reset. I see that the wave is close enough that this wave will never kill my wave, that it can never crash, so now I will just reset. Now, if you're Aatrox, what would you guys do? If you're Aatrox right now, you would teleport because the wave is pushing away from you. Right? And if the wave is pushing away from you, you're losing a lot of gold and XP. You don't want that. So if Aatrox doesn't want to fall too much behind, he needs to teleport here to make sure he soaks enough gold and XP here. So what am I going to do? If I know that he's going to teleport back in lane, staying isn't going to be smart. Because even though I have a kill, I haven't been able to spend my gold so far. And I also am very low in terms of HP. So I'm going to, if I know that he's going to teleport back to lane, I'm going to reset here, teleport back to lane as well, and try to keep a freeze here because the wave is going to keep pushing towards me. And then with an item advantage, I should look to uh, Alen him. Now, the game is a little bit... If you were going to see some shenanigans here, but 
The main idea is still upholds. So let's see what happens here. I'm going to fast forward it. I recall Aatrox teleports. I'm going to teleport here. And if you look at itemization, we have a Vampire Acceptor against a Longsword. So obviously, I will win. Now, at this point, all I need to look for is to freeze the wave here. Unfortunately, and this is solo queue, we have to adapt. Some shenanigans happen, right? Jarvan is here. He forces something. He is way over in his hit in the river here. He doesn't know what he's doing. Now, my Evelyn comes. Vladimir is also overstaying. He's walking back. The enemy Vladimir is looking to dive my Jarvan. These are all shenanigans. Not going to go too deep into that. But the main issue is, the main issue is here, that since I had to join all of these shenanigans, because Aatrox Wave was so big, they actually killed almost all my minions. And now I can't really hold this freeze anymore because there's way too many minions to tank. And my next wave is still a very far away. So I can't really hold this anymore. So the idea of a freeze here is actually not viable anymore. Right? Echo tries to gank as well. He fails his flash, but... Or like he doesn't fill it, but he just thinks that I'm in range of his W. Doesn't really matter. The thing is here, I was in a perfect situation. I could freeze the wave, and now due to some shenanigans, or due to some shenanigans, I couldn't. And this will happen a lot of your game. So I took actually an example like this, where you can actually, you're set up for success in your lane, and now due to some shenanigans, it's kind of screwed, right? You still have a lead, but it's kind of screwed. So I'm going to show you guys how you can play around with that. So here, Aatrox is just doing some shenanigans. I don't know what he's doing. I'm going to kill him. I'm going to end up killing him here. But it's not really due to my own macro plays here. It's just because he's not that smart, I would say. Because the problem with this Aatrox is he crashed the wave. What else does he want to do? He crashed in the wave. It's very unlikely that he's going to dive me here. I have a lot of minions to queue towards and play around with. And a lot of outplay potential, especially with flash and stuff. I'm basically full HP. So diving me isn't realistic. So he should just reset or like look to roam, do something on the map here. Right? Because he can't really do anything here anymore. So here, what's going to happen? Look, he keeps on staying here for no reason. So I can keep on taking some small trades with him. And ultimately, I'm going to end up killing him because of that. But that's not the point. He just overstays for no reason. I don't kill him because of my macro. I just kill him because his poor macro. Right? So now, what's going to happen? This is where we resume the macro plays again. Is Well, Aatrox died because he made a crucial mistake of just overstaying for no reason. Now I shove this wave in. Why do I shove this wave in? Well, if I shove this wave in, it's going to bounce back towards me and then I can look to freeze again. And hopefully now there will be no such shenanigans uh, like previous and we can just look to freeze. So look what I'm going to do here. I'm going to crash and I'm going to recall. And now a lot of people probably ask, why on earth would you not take the plate? Well, look, I don't want to take the plate here because Aatrox has already recalled. Uh, he's already in basic and he's already respawned again. So the issue is, or like uh, recall again, the issue is if I stay for the plate and then recall, by that time Aatrox will already be in lane or very close to it. That means that while I am in base and walking to lane, he will also be in lane to shove and then take a plate. So at that point, basically both of us took a plate. I would rather have that both of us don't have a plate than that both of us have a plate. Because if both of us have a plate, I will still be the same amount of gold ahead of him that that I am right now, because we will just gain the same amount of gold on top of our current gold, right? But he will be stronger compared to my teammates on the map, because they might not take plates, right? So that I, that's not something I want. I don't want to be ahead of him. I want him to be behind compared to me, but also behind compared to my teammates, so that he can't really carry anything, right? So here, I just recall. Now, in the future, you're going to see me stay for a plate, and that's going to be a different scenario. I'm going to explain you why. Now, the main thing you guys need to know is, I crashed away from this third. It's pushing back towards me, and you're going to see the opportunities that I get from that. Right now, I am in a great spot. First of all, the wave is pushing towards me, so I can look to freeze. Even as Echo is here, I can just walk back, because I'm not going to miss a lot of gold. But I can look to freeze, that's the main thing. On top of that, I'm Irelia. I, am, I just accelerate when I have a lot of minions to work with, so slow pushing towards me is even better than like on a normal champion. So here, I can just look to all in him. I'm very strong. Look why I'm so aggressive. Two long shorts versus this here. Executioner's calling for anti-heal. Receptor. This is so much more gold. If you look at our gold right now, 1.5k gold versus 2.5k gold. I have 1k gold more spent basically than he did. So I'm so much stronger. So I can play very aggressive here. And now what can he do about it? Well, he can't really do a lot about it. Right. He can't really do a lot about it. Because his wave is pushing towards me. So if he wants gold and XP, he needs to walk up. 
But if he does if he does so, then he might actually risk dying. And if he recalls, he will lose a lot of XP and gold. So he should, yeah, his game is just screwed at this point. He can't win anymore. There's not a, win, uh, a winnable play. So if I just here, look, he walks up for a brief moment, we just kill him. He walked up for a very brief moment, take a minion, we kill him there. Now, what do I do? I have two options. If I wanted to recall here, if I wanted to spend my gold, because I have 500 gold right now, I could look to recall right now. Both of us don't have teleport. If I just recall and go back to lane, the wave will be here and I will still be able to freeze it. But I am planning on staying. Why am I planning on staying? Well, I'm still full HP, full mana. My item lead is still very big, even if he comes back to lane with like even another item. Right? I would still be so much ahead. And also, I don't have that much gold to spend, so I can't really get a, cra a crazy power spike. And then the most important part, I have a play to take. So look what I'm going to do. This is, I'm going to shove in the wave here as fast as possible. And I'm going to try and take a plate here. Now, what, now you might ask, why on earth are you not recalling? Why are you taking a plate? Because in the same scenario last time, you said this is bad because now Aatrox is walking to lane. You're overstaying. And now if you recall, he gets to shove in and take a plate of yours. Well, that's the entire idea. I'm not planning on recalling here. Last time I needed to recall. I was low on resources. Now I'm high on resources and recalling will not be will not make a big difference here. But if I stay, I can still beat him. So I might as well stay, take a plate, knowing that I can still beat him even though if I stay. So now I crashed the wave, I took a plate, it's gonna bounce back towards my direction again. I'm gonna sneak in here to see what I can do. And now, look, the wave is pushing back towards me. I can just be aggressive here. Echo is here, but I spotted him on this ward so I can play around it. Now, I'm very strong, so I, I'm level 8, level 6, level 5. I can easily 1v2 this if I play it correctly. So here, I'm just going to play safe, make sure I don't get hit by anything of Echo. Here, I'm going to escape. Look, and now it's going to happen. I know that Echo walks away, so this is just a mechanical mistake of Echo, or like, not a, a macro mistake. He, he thinks Aatrox is safe. Aatrox walks up for no reason as well. That's basically his mistake, actually. I use the fact that he just walked up for a brief moment, and I just all in him. Now, what do I do in a situation like this? What do I do in a situation like this? It's simple. I know if I push in, Echo stays, but I'm going to have to do it. Because otherwise I lose a lot of CS. I don't want to have Aatrox to have a temporary freeze. So I'm going to shift this in, make sure it crashes, and then it can bounce. Then the wave will be... Like, if I crash this wave, it might bounce back in my direction again. You see? And that is, that is how you play the game. Then it can push back towards my direction again. I can freeze again. And so on. And now, in this situation, you'll see that Echo is actually able to kill the entire wave before the next wave comes. You'll see this. So now the wave... Look, the wave doesn't go... It's not pushing towards me. It's just going to meet into the middle. That's no problem. Because what am I going to do in a situation like this? Look, Aatrox pushes it out. And now I just slow push. If he didn't push it out, I would just push it out. And then it would push back towards me. Now, since he pushed it back towards me, what do I do? Well, I just slow push, build a big wave and look to dive in with it because I'm so strong. I have currently these items versus his items. So I'm turbo strong. I'm also level 9, he's level 6. So look, I can just slow push, build a big wave and then look to kill Aatrox and deny him all these minions. So here I all in him, I'm super strong. Crash this wave and he loses a lot of gold. All right. And this is, ladies and gentlemen how you snowball your lead. And I'm not sure what elo this is. I believe it's low emerald. So this is not that bad of an elo. Top 10%, top 9% of league. Um, this is how you snowball your lane completely. And it all started off with the two wave crash. Right. So keep that in mind. This is how you snowball a small lead. Step number five, take teleport over ignite. In my opinion, teleport is so much better than ignite. It allows you to outplay your lane opponent with wave mechanics. It basically gives you two HP and mana bars, and more importantly, it allows you to split push. As a top laner, split pushing will often be one of your main roles. Having teleport is what allows you to do so. If Baron is about to spawn on the top side of the map, teleport allows you to pressure the enemy bot side. Whenever a fight breaks out around that Baron, you have the choice of continuing your push on the bot side of the map or join the fight. This is especially good when you're playing versus opponents who run Ignite. If they don't match you in bot lane, you can take all of their turret and potentially even pressure the Nexus and if they do match you bot, you can just back off and teleport to the Baron fight, and you should win, because the enemy top laner is still bot. On top of that, with the recent changes, teleport has actually become quite good in the early game as well. Starting from 10 minutes in the game, you're already able to teleport, because it becomes unleashed at that point, and that is what allows you to make those good teleport plays. 
Personally, I've done a lot of teleport plays and I've always focused to make teleport plays on the bot lane as soon as I can, so typically around 10 minutes in the game. Step number six, play enough games. I mentioned it before, matchup understanding is a crucial part of playing top lane. Since most of the time you'll be in a melee versus melee matchup, both you and your opponent will have a lot of all-in potential at all stages of the game. This means that understanding each other's item and level power spikes will absolutely be crucial. In order to find all of this out, you'll simply have to put in the work and play enough games, but there's also something else that can help you as well. What I personally like to do is, if I just played or if I'm about to play a matchup that I don't really understand in terms of matchup understanding, I'll search on YouTube for that exact matchup but then in a challenger elo. This shows me how the matchup should be played and then I can determine if I should play more or less aggressive in my own elo. For example, if I'm about to play Irelia into Riven and I see that the rank 1 Irelia typically levels E and starts Doran's shield instead of the usual Q start and Doran's blade purchase, then I already know that I should be playing safe in this matchup and only fight my opponent if they make obvious mistakes. Now since I'm not in a challenger elo, I don't have to completely copy the rank 1 Irelia in this matchup because my opponent will be a lot worse. So basically I could limit test to see if I could still win the matchup because of my opponent's mistakes. But at least I'll have some kind of framework that allows me to know how this matchup works. For now, that's all I have to say. There's definitely not anything revolutionary in this video, but that's just it. You don't climb by using a secret Korean build or a hidden Chinese super server mechanic, you climb by improving your fundamentals like wave mechanics over and over again. So to summarize, this is what we focused on for this video. 1. Have a small champion pool. 2. Have at least one strong early game champion in your champion pool. 3. If you can, get prior over the first couple of waves. 4. Always try to do a 2 or 3 wave crash. 5. Use teleport over ignite, especially for side laning in the mid game. And 6. Play enough games to learn about matchup understanding. The key to your climb will not be to absorb an insane amount of knowledge or adopting new secret strategies, but rather play enough games to master the execution of these fundamentals that I use myself. Thank you for watching and good luck with your climb.